What's up, everybody? Last night, The Mandalorian continued its late season tradition of delivering straight bangers. This is legit my second favorite episode of the entire series, and if Luke wasn't in the season 2 finale, this would be number one. From the fight scenes, to the big reveal, to the huge Breaking Bad cast cameo, and we're gonna get into all of it right now. We start out with a beautiful shot of Coruscant as L.A. Kane sneaks through the underworld. I gotta tell you, I wish they'd move on from George's stuff, but I'm a sucker for Coruscant and especially the underworld. Having seen it for a short bit in Andor teased me into needing it and this episode delivered. So down there. Elia meets a probe droid and contacts Moff Gideon, who's in a rush to get a report. She gives a vague report on Pershing, and we still really don't know his fate, but we know she is still an imp. Gideon is in a rush to end this call, but is seemingly phased by the news that Din, Bo, and the rest of the Creed help stop the pirates on Navarro. From there, he returns to his meeting, his meeting with the Shadow Council. A group of Imperial remnants with two standout members, Captain Pelion, who serves Grand Admiral Thrawn, and Commandant Hux, who's the father of Admiral Hux, or the Spy, from the sequels. He's also working on Project Necromancer, which has to do with cloning, and the new leader of the Empire, which could mean Palpatine and his contingency, but we have to make a pit stop at Snoke first for that to happen. Gideon is not happy with Thrawn's absence from the council and says they need to find a new leader, considering he's heard no whispers of Thrawn from any of his spies across the whole galaxy. The group finally comes together after Gideon mentions the Mandalorians, and so they're sending reinforcements to the Moth, including three Praetorian guards. They end the call chanting, Long live the Empire. Then we jump to Navarro where the children of the Watch have set up camp as the Night Owls and their fleet arrive. There's a strong tension between the Creed and the Night Owls, specifically between Paz and Axe Wolves, but Bo doesn't allow anything to come of it, with the help of the Armor, of course, who proposes a feast for the newcomers. In the meantime, Mando goes with Magistrate Karga to his office, where we find out the Anzolans have repurposed IG-11, who is now IG-12, and he's also a vehicle, a vehicle for none other than Grogu who not only has an assassin droid in his control now, but has a voice. I loved this. Like, I was genuinely laughing so hard when he was walking around the office and the streets doing the no, 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 yes, 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 no. It was awesome, and also the perfect role for Taika Waititi. They return to the Mando camp, and Bo amps the group up to go reclaim Mandalore, and they set off. They're going to send a small party to the surface to make sure the Great Forge is safe and secure it so the others can come down from waiting in orbit with the fleet. As they exit hyperspace, we get my favorite shot of the whole show and maybe one of my favorites of the entire universe. This was one of the coolest ways I've seen ships merge from light speed in live action. So a huge shout out to Rick Famuyiwa for this shot. Back to the surface though, as they're exploring, they come across what seems to be pirates until it's revealed they're Mandalorians that had been living on the planet since the Night of a Thousand Tears. And this is our Breaking Bad cameo too, as Charles Baker, who plays Skinny P in Breaking Bad, is now an official Mandalorian. Traveling on their ship, we find out that Bo-Katan surrendered to the Empire and thought she was saving her people, but Moff Gideon betrayed her. We also get it confirmed, I believe for the first time by a member, that the children of the Watch are a fractured sect of Death Watch. This was always how I saw it, but we never got it confirmed really until now, I don't think so, so it's always good getting something reaffirmed. There's a really great moment between Bo and Din where she questions her ability to bring the people together after failing to do so multiple times in the past. However, he tells her that it's about more than just having the Darksaber. The Saber doesn't actually mean anything to him and his people, with the exception of Pez Vizsla, of course, but they look for honor and loyalty in their leaders instead. That is why he will follow her, and why he believes in her. The group splits as the armorer takes some of the refugees to the fleet for medical aid, and Skinny P and the rest of his crew lead Din, Bo, Paz, and the rest of the ground crew to the Great Forge. On their way there, Axe and Paz have a 
big fight over their game after Axe pushes his buttons throwing insults at him. They go at each other with their vibroblades, which had really great effects might I add, as Bo says they just have to let them go at it, but Grogu is not having any of that as he steps into the middle with IG-12 separating them and hitting his no voice command. Once they arrive at the Great Forge, they're attacked by yet another dinosaur, and what is this now? Four different types this season, and a planet that feels like Isla Nublar's theme park. But anyway, this thing is huge and destroys their ship, sending them fleeing into the caves. However, they'd already arrived at the Great Forge, like I said, and they head down into what remains, which isn't much. And just as they think they escape danger, a new one emerges. They hear jetpacks and think it's more Mandalorians until they see it's stormtroopers. Stormtroopers who have Baskar armor and substantially outnumber the scavengers. They're able to hold their own though and force the troops to retreat, but they pursue and walk into a trap. Din and three others are separated, the three being killed quickly and then captured, then down comes a blacked out Mando and it's none other than Moff Gideon in his new armor. This was such a badass intro for the Moth, and I love his new armor. It truly was great. As they take Din away, Bo tries to cut through the door on the other side so the Mandos can escape and get back up, but Gideon opens the blast door so the fighting resumes. Paz gives the fleeing Mandalorians cover, and then when it's his turn to fall back, he doesn't. Shutting the blast door as he tells Bo there are too many of them before one last this is the way. He actually fends off all the stormtroopers, even after his machine gun overheats as he absolutely mopped the floor with them, and it seemed like he may just live to fight another day, but then come the Praetorian Guards, and they were not messing around. They came in and made quick work of a depleted Paz who went out fighting, as any Mandalorian would wish to do, with the highest honor. I love this episode, and the ending has me itching for the season finale. This episode tied so many things together from the earlier episodes, just as I predicted it would in last week's breakdown. And like I said, minus Luke Skywalker returning, this was my favorite episode of the whole series. I know there was some sequel stuff put into it, but it didn't really bother me because it was some of the cooler stuff from those movies, like the Praetorian Guards. But that's just me. How did you feel about Chapter 23, The Spies? of the Mandalorian. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below and subscribe for tons of Mando theories leading into the finale as well as coverage on all the nerdy news and the Mando finale and make sure you have a great day.